Aside from playing games and recording them, I also enjoy looking into games deeper and making theory out of it. Anyway, today's video will be about Genshin Impact Wuwang's Hill. For me, there's only two places that I consider scary in the game. One of them is Wuwang Hill and the other is Juyan Cars. Among those two places, I personally find Wuwang Hill to be more scary and that's the main focus of today's video. Now, about a few months ago while I'm still new to Genshin, I recorded a video where I did a quest for a girl named Little Nine. And if you haven't done her quest yet and don't want to be spoiled, you can click off this video. But really, it's nothing grand or anything. She asks you to find her a book that she lost and at the end, you'll realize that she's in fact a ghost. After that, the quest ended on a cliffhanger, never again to be touched. Now, initially, I thought that with the release of Hu Tao in this new event, we will maybe get to see Little Nine again and possibly get an ending to the cliffhanging ending quest that she gave us. But all the time I was doing the event, there was no side quest prompt or anything to indicate that we could see the continuation of Little Nine. So since the quest ended in a cliffhanger, we as player are forced to make up our own version of the ending, which is what I'm doing in this video. Now, before we jump into it, I want to make a reminder that this is purely my interpretation of the ending and you are welcome to state your own version. With that being said, let's get into this. You started off the quest by making contact with Little Nine. There she asks you if you can help her find her missing book. The book was written by Big Nine himself and it's specially made just for her. She then told you that she started reading the book that Big Nine gave her and was absorbed into it and she didn't realize that Big Nine has already left. When she went looking for him, she fell into the river but managed to get out with only losing the book. It is then here that we are given two dialogue options. Choosing the first one will make her answer that she kept hearing people talking about the traveler and that's how she got to know your name. She then said the player is a nice person and will help anyone in need. Choosing the second option will give you a background of who Big Nine is. Big Nine lived next door to her. They are both nine in their family which is why they were both given the nickname Nine at the end. There's also a hint that she might harbor feeling for Big Nine as she desperately tells you not to tell him if you ever meet him. Whichever you choose, you then proceed to the next one which also gave you two dialogue options. Here, the player can choose any answer and will give a somewhat subtle dark story. Little Nine mentioned that the river carried her a long way and that the water was cold. It froze her hand stiff. However, because she didn't want to lose the book that was given to her, she held it tight. Finally, after being dragged far away, she managed to crawl onto a riverbank and found a place to dry herself and the book. However, because she was so exhausted, she fell asleep for a while and when she woke up, the book was gone. She then proceeded to show you where she dried the book and your quest starts now. There are two main points of interest in this place. Once you reach the first one, Paimon would note that there isn't any piece of paper here to which she urged you to go further deeper. Once you reach the second area, there is still no book or any paper. Paimon then said the girl must have mistaken the place and then said the player should ask the girl for more clue. Upon arriving at the area where you met her the first time, she was nowhere to be seen. To which Paimon wondered if she had gone to find the book herself and this is where the quest ended. At this point on, there is no reason for us to stay here anymore as there is no new quest even if you come back here the next day. I mean the next real time day. However, there will be a quest from Granny Roshin in which you have to find Chang the Nint and deliver him his book. From here on, we're going to do our own investigation. Going by what Little Nine said when we asked her where the book is located, she mentioned that she was drifted from the river far away from her initial location. That doesn't make sense since the area where she lost her book was nowhere near a riverbank and that it would be impossible for a child to climb up the hill in a weakened state. So here's the question, where did she lose both the book and her life? To answer this, I have two theories. The first one is that the location where she guided us to find the missing book is not actually the place. Now, if you make your way up to the entrance of Wuwang Hill, you'll come across two paths where the left one will take you to the entrance but if you take the right one, you'll end up in what could have been a cave with waterfall coming out from the crevice. This to me seems to be the exact location for her to end up with except it's not. Looking back at it, there's a lot of holes in the theories. Looking back at it, there's a lot of hole in this theory. I try to climb up to see where the water come from and to my surprise, the back side of this cave is nothing more but another hill. The answer to this most likely the water on top of the mountain. You can see on the highest peak of this cave, there is an altar for the adeptus and there's water there as well. I could likely be wrong but to me, that is the only logical answer as to how the waterfall 
appear on the cave. Now the second one is what I think would likely be the answer to Little Nine's missing death. You see, we've been thinking, how in the world does she end up on an abandoned village and knowing that she's a ghost, her explanation of how she died doesn't add up. What if? Let's look at it like this. What if? What if Little Nine is not from Wuwang Hill? What if Little Nine is not from Wuwang Hill? Then it made sense when she mentioned that she's drifted far away from her original place. You see, behind Wuwang Hill lies Kingchi Village. Little Nine could possibly live there and considering that she mentioned Big Nine was her neighbor, this add up to the story of her and Big Nine living closely together. So then how did she end up on Buwang Hill? Well she mentioned that she was drifted far away from where she's from. On the far right side of Chang the Nin's house there is a waterfall. Now Chang the Nine might have lived here now but that's not the case when they were kids. It could be possible that both of them live far below of King Chi village which makes sense when Little Nine fall into the river she felt it was dragging her far away and since kids have different perception it really felt far away. So here's what I come up with. Little Nine and Big Nine were playing on the hills on the top of King Chi village. There's a big river there. Big Nine gave her a book specially made for her and she was so absorbed by it that she forgot all about Big Nine presence. Big Nine must have said something like, hey, I'm gonna go back and grab some food. Cause he know that she was too absorbed in the book and it would take a long time for them to be there. So he left her there thinking that she might have hurt him. Well that's not the case. When she was done reading, she found that she was all alone. So she panicked and desperately tried to find Big Nine. While panicking, she falls down on the river and it dragged her all the way through the waterfall. She eventually managed to crawl down in the riverbank and slept there. Unbeknowing to her, that was her last slumber. When she woke up, the book was gone and she thought it was stolen. So she wanders up and eventually found Wu Wang Hill. That answer how she got to Wu Wang Hill. But what about the book? Well, since she didn't realize that she's already dead, she thought she lost the book. But in reality, her cold body still hold the book tightly. So it was never lost. She just didn't realize that she's already dead. Now some of you might have wondered how she went to Wuwang Hill when there are lots of enemies all around her. To get to Wuwang Hill, you need to pass several enemies including the Tsin Tsin Mage and the Hilly Churls along the way. So how does she avoid that? This goes back to what I said earlier. When she arrived at the riverbank when she allegedly sleep, she's actually dead at that point. So when she woke up, she's actually in spirit form. So. The Hilichos and other living things cannot see her and I doubt the enemy can see spirits so most likely they just ignored her. Which is why she was unharmed when she get to Wuwang Hill when there are lots of enemies for you to encounter along the way. And that concludes my own theory of Little Nine. Such a massive story if you look more into it. I can't believe that I spent a lot of time trying to find a logical explanation for this one tiny side quest. What are your thoughts? Again, this is purely theory wise. If you have your own, do tell me and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in any way in this video. I'm always up for criticism. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.